Well, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Victory Update. My name is Tim Fox, along with Kirk Shellstrom today. This is the first day of October, October 1st. And you said something this morning on morning prayer about this time of year. I did. You know, this morning's prayer time was charged up. And if you have not been a part of morning prayer Monday through Friday, 8.30 Central, 9.30 Eastern, you have got to join us in the morning and bring your supply for morning prayer. And this morning, Tim, you know, it was, it's October 1st. It's a new month. It's a new day, the day that the Lord has made. But I called it harvest time yes. because so many people were calling in with needing debt cancellation and paying off their home and paying off their school loans and all the different things. And uh, someone got on the Victory Channel Facebook page and put harvest time and it like hit me <laughs> and it just went like wildfire after that. So uh, it was a great time. I think it was a word from the Lord. I really, really do. And it, it, listen, you can take hold of that. You can grab That's hold right. of that. Anytime, day or night. And listen, if you need prayer, all you have to do is call our number, 877-281-6297. That's where our prayer ministers are right now. They will take your call. They will pray with you. They will believe God with you. There is an anointing when they pray. I promise you, they know how to do it because they're trained in the Word of God. So make sure you call that number, 877-281-6297. And Kurt, we also have a product today that we want the people to take advantage of. The word works, Tim. Yes, and, and it's all I need. <laughs> that's, all, that's all anyone needs. It's all and I we want to encourage you today, the word works, it's all uh, I need by Brother Copeland. It's a free digital download. You see it on the screen there. Simply go to govictory.com forward slash victory update. And we want to encourage you to get that today. Again, it's totally free as we sow this into you. Again, the word works, it's all I need. Yeah, that title just tells you really all you need to know about that. Again, call the number 877-281-6297 if you need prayer. Let's get you caught up on the news of the day in the spirit of faith. Let's bring in Mike Garofalo. Mike. Thanks, Tim. President Donald Trump campaigned in Duluth on Wednesday, marking his third visit to the key swing state of Minnesota in recent weeks. Joe Biden says Antifa is just an idea. Well, ideas don't assault cops and they don't burn down buildings. Antifa is a domestic terrorist organization. Trump spoke at the Duluth International Airport the day after his first debate with Democratic challenger Joe Biden. And his insults and accusations flew across the debate stage in Cleveland on Tuesday night. One memorable moment took place when Donald Trump called out Joe Biden's son for allegedly cashing in with foreign countries while his dad was vice president. Biden clearly said flat out that was not true. But according to the Washington Times, Treasury Department reports show Hunter Biden did in fact receive the money in question. The money came from Russia in a single wire transfer of $3.5 million from Elena Batarina the wife of the late mayor of Moscow. Other questionable transactions included 20 wire transfers totaling $1.3 million from Hunter Biden to Joe Biden's brother James for so-called consulting services. In an attempt to offer the moderator more control of the next presidential debate, cutting candidates' mics is being discussed as a possibility. On Wednesday, the Presidential Debate Commission said it was talking about changes to allow the moderator to maintain control. Tuesday's first presidential debate was by almost all accounts an out-of-control free-for-all. The moderator, Fox News' Chris Wallace, tried to keep order but was mostly unsuccessful. The next presidential debate with a town hall format is set for October 15th in Miami. An endorsement from across the aisle for President Trump, Ohio Democrat, State House member Bernadine Kennedy Kent announced in a news release that she will be endorsing the president over Joe Biden, saying she is not only black, but also a proud American and delighted to endorse Donald Trump. Kent said she likes the president's leadership and dedication to the American people. She called Joe Biden's rhetoric both divisive and disrespectful. Joe Biden came out of the basement to debate. Now, after that, he hit the rails for a whistle stop tour through Ohio and Pennsylvania. The stops in the Keystone State included Pittsburgh, Greensburg, New Alexandria, Latrobe, and Johnstown. Pennsylvania is looked at as a key state to win by both the Biden and the Trump campaigns. It has 20 electoral college votes. More economic relief may soon be on the way to help individuals and businesses cope with the fallout from the coronavirus, but not yet. 
Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin on Wednesday said the White House and Democrats had not yet reached a final version of the measure, but this is what he did reveal. If the two sides can agree on a fifth coronavirus relief bill, direct payment stimulus checks will be part of it. It will include more money for the Paycheck Protection Plan and for struggling airlines and funding for schools as well as testing. A little more than five years ago, the Supreme Court legalized same-sex marriage, but prior to that, Nevada was one of 30 states to ban the practice. Now, this November, Nevadans will be voting on whether to remove the definition of marriage as a union between a man and a woman from the state constitution. The proposed amendment would recognize all marriages regardless of gender. The state of California, under a new law signed by Gavin Newsom on Wednesday, will study as to how it can make things right for its role in the oppression of black people. The law calls for a nine-member task force to find options as to what reparations would be appropriate. The state never had a government-sanctioned slavery system, but it did allow white people to bring slaves to the Golden State. And even though former FBI Director James Comey oversaw a botched investigation into the Trump campaign's contacts with Russia during the 2016 election, he said he was proud of what the work he did. In fact, during testimony before the Senate Judiciary Committee on Wednesday, Comey was not willing to take any responsibility for the lapses in judgment and the Bureau's withholding of key bits of information. In the midst of opposing demonstrations about the nomination of Amy Coney Barrett on the steps of the Supreme Court on Sunday, one woman allegedly got punched. The pro-life protester was on hand to support Barrett when she apparently got into a heated discussion with a member of the pro-choice crowd. Now, according to the Christian Post, Autumn Shimmer, a pro-life supporter, had just finished a conversation with a woman from the other side when she was punched in the face and her mask was ripped off. You might do a double take when you hear this story. Faithwire is reporting that an atheist group has taken the side of a Christian student in Georgia for sharing his faith outside of a free speech zone on a college campus. The incident happened in 2016 on Georgia Gwinnett College campus. The American Humanist Association says they filed a brief this week in support of the student because they say the school wrongly limited the student's right to free speech. The case will be heard by the Supreme Court sometime soon. And Senate Republicans are taking a stand against schools that allow biological males who identify as transgender to compete in women's sports. As Faithwire reports, the new bill, which would defund schools that permit such competition, is called the Protection of Women and Girls in Sports Act of 2020. Investigators have arrested and charged a man in connection with the shooting of two Los Angeles County Sheriff's deputies earlier this month. They were shot as they sat in a squad car near a metro station. The district attorney says attempted murder charges were filed against Deontay Lee Murray. Murray was arrested two weeks ago in connection with a separate carjacking. A small air leak aboard the International Space Station, which has been there for more than a year, is getting bigger. But NASA says the astronauts are close to finding it. Those on the station will go from module to module this week until they isolate that leak. NASA says the leak poses no immediate danger to the crew. Back to you in the Victory Studios. All right, Mike, thank you very much. Now, as I was watching that, it occurred to me to share with you as you watch the news, if you watch our news, it's, this is not nearly as something that you're going to want to do as much as if you watch the national news. But if you watch the news, let not your heart be troubled. Amen. That's what the Word of God says. Don't let your heart be troubled. I, look, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of things to be troubled about. But listen, we know the Creator. We know the guy that's got all this stuff under control. And as long as we keep seeking His face, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. And I know that's what we're doing here and that's what you're doing there. Humbling yourself and pray. What's he say? I will heal their land. That's Amen. what he says. And, that's, and so he's going to do that. That's right. He's a man of his word. God right. is not a man that he should lie. So another thing you can do is tonight watch Flashpoint at 8.30, 7.30 Central leading up to America Stands at 9, 8 Central. All tonight, we've got lots of great things for you. We're going to talk about the Supreme Court. We're going to talk a little bit about the debate and, uh, stuff that happened the other night. So you want to make sure you're here for that tonight. Don't miss Flashpoint 
at 8.30, 7.30 Central, and America Stands at 9, 8 Central. And I know you moderate those on Facebook, and people yeah. are really, really getting and, a lot out of this. And, and tonight, you know, Lance Walnow has been the guest the last two weeks. Yes. And we have with Lance and, of course, uh, Pastor Gene, Hank Kuhneman and <sighs> Pastor Hank out of Omaha, Nebraska. And last time Pastor Hank was on, um, we were on social media. I mean, the numbers just went through the roof and, yeah. you know, uh, I know the Lord has downloaded him on uh, some a powerful word and uh, you just got to be a part tonight. You don't want to yep. miss it. Again, 730 Central, uh, 830 Eastern and uh, Flashpoint, a great program yeah. with Lance and yeah. uh, yeah, make sure yes. you're here. Make sure you watch tonight. And also, we want to let you know about uh, our KCBC virtual interest meeting, which is coming up this Saturday at 3 p.m. Central. Go to kcbiblecollege.org to find out more information about that KCBC virtual interest meeting. If you've ever thought about going to Bible school, this will be a good thing for you to get uh, to get to be involved in this weekend. Now, let's take a praise break. And, and today. I want to take you back to our Southwest Believers Convention. Michael Howell and the team singing Victorious Ones. Watch this. How many know we're the Victorious Ones? Yeah. Lift your voices. Make your praises loud. Come and sound. We are conqueror runs through Kim who loves us. We are living as your daughters and your sons. We are, we are the victorious ones. We are, we are the victorious ones. Oh, 
That's exactly right. We are the victorious ones. And when you think about the news earlier, we're the victorious ones. When you think about what's going on in the world today, we are the victorious ones. So make sure you just walk in that every day. Hey, our guest today, you're really going to enjoy. Dick and Mary Irvis, they're longtime partners with KCM, and they're co-founders of Prayer for the Nation. Uh, for years, Dick, a professional voiceover talent, has donated his time and talent to us here at KCM. You'll hear him on many of our product and promotional advertisements. They're here today to fill us in on their latest adventures. And I guarantee you, you will love these two because they've got a lot of adventures going on. Uh, you can connect with them on Facebook uh, at Prayer for the Nation TV. Hey, friends. Hey. Hello, Timbers. <laughs> Now, it must be said that we've known each other quite a long time. So uh, this is kind of like uh, three friends hanging out. We're going to talk for a few minutes, and you guys can just join in if you want to. <laughs> we get to tell uh, tales. Like we get to tell tales, ever. yes. <laughs> talk about your connection with KCM. How did you first get connected with us? In 1990, when I started my VO career, the Lord immediately impressed on me that I had to plant seed into good ground in order to... Uh, kind of jumpstart the VO business. Yeah. And, and me, I said, where, who, what, how? He said, Kenneth Copeland Ministry. Wow. And it didn't, uh, we didn't hear back right away, <laughs> but uh, this was around 1990, uh, early 1991, we got a phone call from, I think it was Carlene Higgins. Right. Saying, uh, we accept your offer. And that was back in the days before anything digital. Right. So I would record voiceovers on a quarter inch reel to reel tape and FedEx <laughs> them uh, to, you know, Casey. When did you know you had a voice to do something like that? Two weeks old. <laughs> <laughs> when, when, when did, it really, you know, I had that deep voice all along, but when did I have the desire to? get into the business, it was around 75. Wow. Yeah. yeah you were a young lad back then, right? Oh, yeah. Wet yeah. behind the ears. <laughs> <laughs> Other than KCM, can you tell us some of the highlights of your career, some of the things you've enjoyed? It's doing? kind of, kind of interesting. I started out uh, in Minneapolis and then got an agent in Chicago, did some John Deere uh, voiceovers. And, uh, but the big break came when we moved to Los Angeles and the Fox Network got the football away from CBS. Right. 1994. And uh, they put out a little cattle call audition thing for an announcer. And uh, I was shaking in my boots when I, the first time I said, you are watching the NFL on Fox, you know. And for some reason, the finger is part of the... Right. Part of the Nobody deal. can see you, but you're still doing it. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, uh, and praise the Lord, I got the job. Tell me about how you all met. Oh, well, <laughs> there were several people in our lives that were standing at the ready to connect us. As it turned out, uh, a girlfriend of ours uh, introduced us. She was actually working for Dick when he was in a business of voicing training tapes. Mm -hmm. And I met her at a prayer group and we got to be good friends. And so I was uh, running a training fair. I was in the training and development business and so the American Society for Training and Development had a training fair and she was working with people that were uh, sending out tapes to people, you know, they were producing them and selling them. And so I thought, well, I'll ask Terry to come and bring her bosses. And she did. And the rest is history. Boss. And she's been bossing me around ever since. <laughs> well, as it should be, because you need somebody to boss you around, obviously. Now, you obviously, you guys together have done a radio show together. Talk about that. How'd that come about? And what, so what are some of the things you talked about on that radio you show? You know, when the Lord tells you to do something, depending on your, your maturity and journey of faith, you go, really? And then you might think <laughs> about it for a little bit. But... Uh, and I don't remember the year, sadly, honey. I think it was 2010. Yeah, 20, 20, for 19 months, we had a, a talk show, uh, The Fireside Room with Dick sure. and Mary. Yeah. And we had tiny number of affiliates, two or three uh, radio stations that ran it. In fact, in some of the towns, we may have had more cows listening than, than people. <laughs> but a dear owner of some stations saw the vision and, and put us on the air. And uh, it wasn't the typical conservative talk we we wanted to put in uh, mix it up a little bit put in the occasional uh, mushroom soup recipe and so forth right um 
And, and, but along the way, uh, the Lord worked with us, you know, practice makes perfect. And, and it, we, we began to move away from uh, so much the political narrative and get into, you know, in-depth uh, studies on the, you know, scriptures yeah. pertaining to right. intercessory prayer right. and aligning with the word which is in us and upholds all things. Yes. So yes. there was an evolution of our program there and how it looked. And, you know, we did it for 19 months and I wouldn't trade it for anything. So out of that came prayer for the nation, right? Yes. Talk actually, about that. What is that? And what do you guys do? Well, prayer for the nation uh, began probably back in the late 90s, um, I had a call from the Lord to start praying for government. Mm. And uh, as the years went on, I had different prayer calls that I led. And as a result of doing the Fireside Room, we met a lot of political people and interviewed them because it was an election year. And that led to um, praying in a group called uh, Capital Prayer Network. And after that, those people kind of pushed me into a national governor's prayer team. Wow. <laughs> and um, then the leadership in Minnesota on that. And along the way, we uh, got a vision from the Lord. Yeah. Uh, it was huge. Yeah. It's still huge. How do we pray? For, how do we pray for this nation, Dick and Mary? Because obviously we are in a time in our nation where it's, I mean, we need it. We need prayer. Mm -hmm. How do we pray for this nation? You pray only and precisely what the Holy Spirit tells you to pray, which more often than not is the Word of God. Right. Mm -hmm. it, it goes out, it's sent to accomplish a thing, and it does. It never returns void. And that's, that's a, a, you know, when you consider various uh, disciplines like playing a violin or perhaps ballet dancing, yeah. uh, you practice, 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 <laughs> you know, and then in that repetition, you refine and optimize how God can use yeah. that through you to move mountains. People would say, does prayer really work? Does it work? Absolutely. Millions of times a day. <laughs> it does. And you've seen it in your own lives, right? I mean, I know you can probably think back over many, many times in your life. Give me one or two where you know God came in and really moved on your behalf? Well, we have had some real financial challenges over the years. And that just caused us to press into the Word. You know, my God shall supply all of your needs according to His riches right. and glory by Christ Jesus. It's not according to what it says in your checkbook or uh, what you think is going to come in the mail next week. It's been uh, to the place where I would just pace back and forth in the winter time when it's cold in Minnesota, <laughs> right. down in my basement, you know, and just press into the Word, press into the Word. And all of a sudden, the Lord would give us a strategy. And uh, we would, for example, we had some uh, credit card bills mm. and they had high interest rates. And the Lord gave us a strategy and all of a sudden, uh, we're paying off credit card bills. Praise God. Uh, we got an offer to have 0% interest for a year. Wow. Well, we would never have thought of that, but just declaring the word, declaring yeah. it, watering it. Then when the Lord says, decree this, decree yeah. a thing, Job 22, 28. <clears throat> and so we would decree that. We'd decree that all of our debts were paid. Mm. And we'd see things happen, miraculous things yeah. happen over and over. People would offer us things. It was like, <laughs> this is favor. Right. This is really favor. Yeah. We didn't, we, things we didn't even think of. Wow. Men shall give unto your bosom. That's yes. right. Yes. You know, we started this conversation talking about your association with KCM, and we've talked a little bit about how your financial life has been blessed because of your association. I would love to, for you to talk a little bit about how your spiritual life has changed by being a part of this ministry? Well, back when we first met you, when we were in California, mid-90s yeah. roughly, uh -huh. <laughs> um, we were sitting under the teaching of Kenneth and Gloria, and, uh, as well as uh, the late, great Charles Capps. Sure. And, and uh, the, the topics that were impressed uh, to us by the Lord were uh, faith confessions. Mm-hmm. 
And so we actually, uh, Lord called us uh, to, to gather and aggregate the confessions together from both the Copelands and Caps and some others as well. And uh, I prayed those prayers every weekday for over 20 years. Yeah. And each day I could just feel more of the word that upholds all things just growing inside of me. And the Lord prompted me, he said, declare and decree that the word reaches every subatomic particle, known and unknown, named and unnamed, seen and unseen. Mm. And sometimes it spread quickly. Yeah. Then sometimes there'd be weeks and even months where it didn't move much. But, yeah. but today I can tell you without a doubt that the takeaways from planting seed into KCM and also did VO for Charles Capps right. as well, among other things, right. uh, is a harvest that cannot be counted in any way, oh, shape or form. It's yeah. such a blessing. There's no way you could have known back then. And really back then you were struggling and you did that out of obedience. Talk a minute to the people about how important obedience is and the rewards of obedience. Obedience is the difference between knowing and understanding that when, when, when Jesus said greater things than these shall you do, he did not say greater things than these shall you do by yourself. Hey, hey. He <laughs> said greater things than these shall you do because I go to the Father. A little bit later on in that same chapter in John, he talks about, I only say what the Father tells me to say and, I, and it is the Father who does the works through me. Yeah. And obedience is at the epicenter of that discipline. So that the only thing that, not the only thing, but perhaps at least in our experience, the most effective thing is if the Lord says to lift your little finger, you only lift your little finger. You know, you obey every moment of every day. And, and if something is unclear, you just be still and know he's God until Amen. you get the clarity. Amen. Well, you guys obviously are visiting here. Uh, you do that occasionally. And we are always excited when you come. It's always a, a, a big day for us, a couple of days when you come and visit. Thank you for coming and thank you for doing this program today on last minute uh, uh, request because you weren't scheduled to come do this. So, uh, <laughs> it's a blessing pleasure. to be able to do it. it was, really. It's really been great, great having blessing. you. Thank you. We appreciate you guys so much. And, uh, you know, I say it so many times, my tenure here with this ministry, being here as long as I have, has allowed me to meet and get to know some really, really quality, wonderful people. And these two people really fall into that category and we appreciate them so very much. I want to remind you again not to miss tonight. Now, I told you a little moment ago about tonight's uh, program, Flashpoint. We're actually now going to extend that program for a full hour. So, 8, 7 Central for that program, and then 9, 8 Central for America Stands. All of that live tonight right here on the Victory Channel. You don't want to miss that. Of course, tomorrow morning, don't miss morning prayer. Tomorrow morning at, uh, at, at 9.30, 8.30 Eastern. And then tomorrow afternoon, our, we'll have another uh, victory update for you at 5, 4 Central. So don't miss that either. If you need prayer, 877-281-6297. Call that prayer line. Talk to one of our prayer ministers. They would love to pray for you. Again, don't miss tonight. Don't miss tonight's Flashpoint and tonight's America Stands. You will be blessed. We're going to talk about some things to encourage you in the spirit of faith. And that's really the only way to do it, right? God bless you, everybody. Thank you so very much for being with us today. We appreciate you so very much. Until we see you again tonight, remember God loves you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord. Lord.